Well, good morning, my YouTubers. Welcome back to Three Pound Fishing, guys. Beautiful, beautiful day today. We got, uh, it's early morning, roughly around 7.30. We're gonna have Bluebird Sky Days. Uh, we've got actually a, kind of a slightly cooler one today, a high of 72 degrees. So this is absolutely a, a, a stunner of a day. A little breezy, but a, a beautiful day nonetheless. So we're gonna put big slabs in the boat. We're gonna be casting at them. Fish should be back on the piles because we're talking about post-spawn. Uh, and, and honestly, I think the spawn's pretty much over. So if you have a question about that, it's it's pretty much irrelevant right now. I think those fish have definitely gone back to the, um, the piles. And it's just now a matter of finding which piles are producing the bigger fish, uh, which piles have a lot of fish on them. Uh, and that's what we're gonna try to figure out today. We've got a, a, a list of guide trips coming up here. And so this is kind of like a prep for me for the week to, to see where we need to be going for those guide trips. So come along, let's do this guys, let's have fun. Please share, here we go. All right guys, so one of the most important things about live scoping, and this is for some people that are just getting into it, is complete boat control. And I'm gonna go back to the absolute fundamentals on it. Um, something that makes it really easy for you to remember when you're approaching a pile you definitely don't want to be coming downwind as we're doing right now as you can see the waves the water is moving this way we want to actually rotate our boat around so that we have the nose of the boat into the wind this really helps out with uh, boat control now if you have crappie breaks as I do a wind like this you can actually manage pretty easily and and actually fish the pile going downwind um, but even that would not be recommended because i'm still going to struggle i'm going to really have to work the, the crappie breaks and so it's always recommended to put your nose into the wind for complete and positive boat control now we are going to just go ahead and throw at this one now we had some major storms last night so i don't know how these fish are going to react but again i'm just trying to assess truly um, which piles are having a lot of fish on them right now and we catch one here we catch one there and then we kind of move on just because we're really just assessing piles uh for the week's guide trip so we're making a good pass on this right now and we're also assessing of course the the size of the fish on the piles oh baby boom Right, start of the day. First fish in the boat. Of course, we're gonna let him go, but it's a nice little eater, good starter. Fantastic. Hair jigs on three pound fishing, guys. Check them out. I'm telling you right now, add to more fish in the boat. Efficiency, that's what it's about, no doubt. Based on feel, unbelievable. That guy came a long way. Again, a smaller eater right here, so that just kind of tells us a little bit more about this pile right now. Now, we've got a ton of, of water yesterday, so I don't know how much of an effect that has on it, but regardless, we know what we got here. We definitely have fish, but at the same time, smaller size. Thirty-fifth cast, spot on it. Never waste a cast. If it's bad, you pull it back. Oh, baby, he's running with it. Not a big fish, but. Could be a keeper on some lakes, but not here. 
Good pile though. Good line of fish right there. Sometimes I will try to go vertical just to see if presentation speed is the real problem here. And that's what we're doing right here. We're just kind of, we have some fish that are on it right now. Bam. So we just slowed it down. We got a bite immediately. Better fish. Still not what we're looking for, but either way, we know they're here. There we go. Slow moving fish today. A lot of, a lot of rain dumped on this water, uh, you know, last night. And so these fish are really not moving fast at all, which is truly amazing. Um, you can catch them casting, but it just seems like we're having a little bit more success just letting it sit on top of the pile and letting them get irritated by it be being in the uh, vicinity. And there you go again. That's just another perfect example of, you know, having to switch up your, your techniques. So the technique I use on that when I'm vertical jigging is most importantly is I'm not just holding onto the rod. I'm putting my fingers on the braid constantly. And typically it's whatever hand is holding the rod. So if my, hand, my right hand's hitting it, I'm always got three fingers on it. My left hand's always got three fingers on that braid. I'm feeling it on that braid way before I'm gonna feel it on anything else, especially on a bite like this where it's super, super, super light. Um, sniping braid, very critical. I do think braid on a bite like this is an absolute advantage. Um, regardless of the brand you use, I use sniping braid. Uh, but you can feel the bite and you can set the hook immediately. These fish are finicky. These fish are not even, without a doubt, considering demolishing what you're giving them. They're, they're still debating it and they're gonna spit it out as soon as possible. Being able to set that hook very quickly is what gets the fish in the boat. So I also believe the hair jig, can't, I can't emphasize that enough. What happens is if you miss a bite real quick, you can allow it to continue to drop back down without even having to be concerned about your plastic or having a minnow on. And a lot of times, especially if it's a white crappie, it's gonna go back and pop it again. Um, and you're gonna have a second shot immediately, but you would not have it had you had the plastic or the minnow. That's my thoughts. Um, of course, everybody else can have different. There are days that plastics are the only thing that wins. There are days that minnows are the only day that win. But if you can get away with a hair jig, 100%, you need to do get, get away with a hair jig. Now, we got a bunch of them on the website, a bunch of brand new colors that have just come out. So check them out. We're going to go with the bluegrass one right here. There's also, I'll tell you what, they, we came out with a um, Let's Go Fishing Pack that has 45 jigs, hair jigs, 45 for $49. That's almost a dollar a hair jig, which is a crazy good deal. So check those out. All right, let's put more fish in the boat here. Hammer 10 is doing the job. I love it, absolutely love it. Oh yeah, that guy came at it hard. Good fish here, guys. Good hungry fish. Good solid eater, we'd call this. There's your bluegrass right there, guys. Fantastic hair jig, solid eater right there. Great fish. Now, the, the other thing that's important about boat control, and I think that's kind of a great topic for this video, is uh, time on the water is ultimately what, what gets you good boat control. You can have the crappie brakes, you can have a great trolley motor, which by the way, I believe is an Ultrax, a Fours, a Ghost. Those are all great trolley motors, any of those. Those are fantastic for live scope systems. but. It's time on the water. It doesn't matter if you have all the technology in the world, if you wanna go out and fish once a month, once a week, once every two weeks, sometime like that, it's gonna be harder for you to pick up on it because you gotta just do it day in, day out. Not, not necessarily every day, but you know what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm saying. So just time on the water will make her happen. So all the technology in the world's great, but we also have great boat control even when we didn't have crappie brakes, even when we didn't have uh, the old Trex, a great trolley motor. Uh, because we spent a lot of time, uh, you know, practicing, essentially. You don't think of it as practice, but when you're out there doing it every day, it is, you know, you getting familiar with your, your ship. So, anyway, I think we're gonna end it right there, guys. I appreciate your time, and uh, please share the video. A great video on, I think, just talking about boat control and finding these piles on these guide trips. So, right now we're running into a lot of smaller fish, it seems like, but uh, I know where the big ones are. and. 
on days like this, I love getting out and, and adventuring down to different parts of the lake that I don't typically fish. And it usually uh, what solidifies where we're going for the week.